and the algorithm is just like my life. It works, but it's mostly nonsense. Hello and welcome back to Bland Man Studios, where I make creative stuff and talk about the technology behind it. If you like computers and you hate throwing stuff out, I've got another crazy use for virtual machines that I think you're going to like. If you're like me, you get sentimental about your old computers. There's something special about turning on an old computer or a game console that just unlocks your memories. It's pretty great, but at some point there is a time to throw things out or wipe them clean and start anew. And the answer to this dilemma is a physical to virtual migration. There are a lot of reasons why you might want to migrate something from physical hardware to a virtual machine. And today I'm going to walk you through mine as I do it for nostalgia purposes. Even if you're not going to do this yourself, stick around because we're going to touch on a pretty unique operating system, some bits of computing history, and even my first C++ program, which is pretty bizarre and turns 10 years old today. And in the end, I will have a VM running on my new computer, which is essentially a window into the past. It will be a virtual machine running exactly like my first laptop, which is this IBM Lenovo ThinkPad T43. It's pretty cool. It's got a fingerprint scanner, a removable CD drive. It's got this flashlight that shines down and lights up your keyboard. And the coolest thing about a ThinkPad, which is the track point mouse. The main steps to this migration are first to boot the old laptop to a live operating system. So it's not using the hard drive, then to copy everything from the hard drive onto an external device. I'm going to use a flash drive then copy everything from the flash drive onto a file on my new computer. Then I will create a virtual machine that can use that file as if it were the original hard drive. So for the live OS, I'm using Void Linux. It's a really cool, totally independent, community-run Linux distribution. There's something pure about something being run by volunteers, like it's separated from financial and business pressures. The key advantages for me are that it still supports the old 32-bit architecture that my laptop uses, and that it's small enough to fit on these old CDs I had lying around. So first I'll boot the computer to the live OS running on a CD I burned. Then I'll plug in the flash drive and run this command to copy everything from the hard drive onto the flash drive. You have to be really careful with this command because the arguments you give it depend on your computer, and if you mix it up you could overwrite the wrong thing. But when that's done, I'll unplug the flash drive and plug it into my new computer. I'll run a similar command to copy the contents off the flash drive onto a file on my new computer. For added flair, I'll convert this file, which is known as a hard disk image, to QCOW2 format. If you want to know why I love QCOW2 files, check out this video on how I back up my gaming VMs while they're running. Then I can create a VM and point it to that new hard disk image, which is again, just a file, but it has all the contents of the old hard drive. Then I'll try to boot it a couple times, I'll get the blue screen of death a bunch of times, fiddle with some things, bang my head against a wall, and ultimately realize the operating system only supports IDE type devices. Not sure why, but boom, it's working. And as you can see, we have our window into the past running on my modern computer. The OS is a little confused because it doesn't have a battery, because it's not a laptop anymore, and I won't be able to play games on here because the VM doesn't have a dedicated graphics card. Side note, I can't pass my modern graphics card in because Nvidia has stopped making drivers for 32-bit operating systems. Lame, I know, but yet another reason why Nvidia should open source the drivers. But yeah, as promised, let's dive into the embarrassment. This is my first ever C++ program. I know this because it's called First C++. I gotta assume it's my first program outside of a tutorial, because no sane person would have you write this code. Okay, so it's a program to calculate square roots, but it only works on perfect squares. There's basically no effort at spacing or readability, and the algorithm is just like my life. It works, but it's mostly nonsense. To find the square root of x, it multiplies x times 2 and then counts backwards, stopping if it happens upon the square root or if it gets to zero. If that sounds confusing, that's because it is. You can also see here that I didn't understand how functions work, because I've used a break after a return, which means it will never execute. Honestly though, I love it. Sometimes the best way to learn something is to just get in there and make a bunch of mistakes. And that's what I've tried to do with this video. So if you found this entertaining or informative, or if this was a huge mistake, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and don't forget to stay bland.